We're going to talk about uh, CAD to GIS. Um, in particular, we're going to talk about um, Esri GIS, Arc GIS. Yeah, integrating yeah. In, integrating into Esri, and we're going to look at some uh, old school CAD today. Yeah, I'm yeah. an old school guy. Let's yeah. look at some old school CAD. No, no, that, that's uh, that's that's great. So, so um, oh, here's our mission here. So we're going to start off with something, um, you know, just a basic thing to to get us started. And uh, then, then Dave's going to show us what, um, it's really a toy example, but it, it illustrates um, some of the patterns we see. And so we'll, you know, for each of these, there's, there's an approach, a step-by-step -step approach that we use to go through those. And that's really what we're, um, we're trying to drive home here today is that, you know, you're, you're given a CAD um, drawing, you need to move it into GIS. How do you, how do you do that? And, and um, because you it, you know it's pretty scary if you look at the end of a of a um, FME workspace, um, you know they can become quite large. But you know sort of illustrating how we attack it step by step, um, and some common patterns we see um, is what this webinar is really about. We will show you some workbenches, but we're not going to get into super detail or finish um, you know particularly the advanced one end to end. But we'll get started. And as you'll see at the end, we're here to help. Um, and um, so if you are, yourself are struggling with a CAD, the GIS uh, challenge, then um, we're always happy to uh, hear about those. And um, it helps us get better. And, um, and it, um, you know, we believe our tools can save you a lot, a lot of time. And uh, yeah, and then last but not least, we're going to show a quick example of uh, GIS to CAD as well. And then we'll do a quick, uh, quick wrap up. Sounds so, good. Yeah. Let's get her started. Yeah. So, so yeah. So, safe. We're using um, FME. FMEs are our technology. It comes in a number of flavors. It comes in the desktop, the server, and the enterprise. No matter um, in the cloud. No matter what you're using, it all starts on the desktop with our workbench. So, so if you're you know you're new to FME or anybody who knows FME um, and you're not sure what product to use, you always start at the desktop because that's the authoring environment and you author not even worrying about where you're going to run. So you author an environment and then you can run it at the desktop and then later you could decide to move it to the server. You know maybe you want to add scheduling. You know and then maybe later you want to make that part of a web service. So then you could move it to FME Cloud, but when you're authoring, you don't even need to worry about um, what what you're, uh, you know, where you're going to run it. So, and we talk about connect, transform, and and automate. And the connect really is about all the different systems we connect to. In this case, we're going to be focused on CAD connections, AutoCAD, MicroStation, and um, on the ArcGIS side as a connection. But we there's I think 400-ish different connectors from databases to files to raster, BIM, LIDAR, web services, you name it. Um, that's what we do. Unpause slides. Okay. Uh, yeah, I'm looking at how to do that. Um, okay. Do, 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 do. Oh, here we go. Okay. Is that better? That's, That's better. better. Okay, so anyway, sorry about so, the technical sorry. glitch. There. But really, you didn't miss anything. There was just a, a slide showing, um, sh showing our beautiful face. So, so anyway, yeah. There so are. there you go. Oh. So there we are. And those are the, yeah. And so connect, transform, and automate. And automate is the last part that really, that's what FME server and uh, FME uh, cloud are all about. So, yeah, yeah. So with that, I think we're ready to go to our first mission, which is a very basic CAD, CAD example. Yeah, too bad we don't have the Mission Impossible music, but That's uh, right. this one's actually Mission Possible. So we'll start off with this one. So what we're, we're just going to do a quick, uh, a quickie translation to sort of get you up and started with uh, our software. And we have here, let me just escape out of this and uh, bring up our starting data set. So I've got here an AutoCAD file. It's pretty simple. And essentially it's uh, a bunch of parcel polylon polygons polylines in this case, but in FME we treat them as true polygons. And we've got uh, the parcels and we've also got the address. Uh, we've got a street number, a street name, and then a parcel ID number. Now these are all separate pieces of text, but what we want to do is to bring in the, 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 this parcel data set into ArcGIS and we want to take these labels inside the polygons and we want to extract those into attributes. Yes. So there's so there's no physical connection between these labels and those polylines is what you're saying. They're just they're, they're just sorted by position. 
Yeah, the they're, they're just there, and uh, this is it's, this is what you often find in a CAD file. Um, CAD's still very drafting oriented, so it's a, it's it's meant to be read by people, not machines. So people are pretty good at figuring, hey, this was what uh, this means, yeah. but um, the software not so much. Mm -hmm. Now to make things a little bit more interesting, we have rotated labels as well. Ooh. Yeah. So what we're and what what are what and now we like I said uh, when we start to do a conversion, it's always good to have like a conversion plan. Yes. So we've got to look at the data, see what we've got, and we can look at it in AutoCAD. But if you don't have AutoCAD, we've also got our data inspector. I'm going to introduce you to this. This is uh, part of FME as well, and this is we call it the data inspector. And what this allows you to do is look at your data. So that's an AutoCAD file. There we go. It's going to read in our file. And there we see pretty much we saw what we saw in the AutoCAD data. Okay. But, and, and you know, it's not meant as a, a true viewing uh, platform. It's, it's a, basically, it's a data inspector. It allows you to inspect your data. You can see what it looks like. Or more importantly, you can see what FME thinks it looks like. Right. And this is kind right. of important. Yes. Uh, on the, the left-hand side here, we have our two layers. We have the address layers. We can turn those on and off. And we have the parcels layer. So we've already broken this up into, you know, into okay. the data into by layers. Yep. Uh, you see on the pieces of text, there's a little dot beside them. That shows you where the text has been placed in the file. Now, the text won't always render in Data Inspector the same as it will in your CAD program or even your GIS software. Again, it's a fairly simple rendering. We assume all tef text is left bottom. Right. So we show you what it looks like left bottom. Luckily, in the CAD file, it is left bottom, so we're all good. Mm -hmm. um, if we click on a, on a line, we see over at the right here um, the feature properties. Um, and, the most, and then we have our, our geometry down here. But we also have what we call format attributes. And these are similar to non-graphical attributes, but there's, they're, they're attributes that are kind of baked into the program. They're attributes that tell you uh, structural things about this data within AutoCAD. So we have uh, in information about the layers. We have information about the line types. We have inf information about colors, um, all with prefixed by the, the format name. Um, we can also look at the text here. Uh, there we go. Now, the text you see has more information, justification, et cetera, but the key one we're interested in right now is rotation. Okay. And because what our conversion plan here is, we have these three labels, and we're going to associate these labels with these polygons. Right. And then we're going to look at the relative, ele or the relative Y location of these labels to decide which one belongs in which attribute. Ah, so these ones are rotated, so you have to first rotate it to get... So exactly. Can, ah, so okay. we have this, we have, we know the rotation here, and that's going to be a, a key piece of information. But again, all, there's a lot of information, and especially on CAD data, and I think the two, the two CAD uh, formats combined, AutoCAD and MicroStation, probably have combined uh, the same amount of format attributes as all our other 300-odd formats. Okay. So it, it, there's a lot of information we're grabbing about AutoCAD, and we're going to use some of it as we go on. So that's a look at the data inspector. Okay. So now let's have a look at the a workspace that we're going to use to convert this. There we go. We'll start up a uh, workbench. We'll bring in our workspace. Okay. This is probably a good opportunity to explain uh, our, our software. So this is our, our key piece of software. This is where you design your conversion process. We call it FME Workbench. Um, and there are several sections to it. The main section is what we call the canvas, and that has the source data sets that come in from the left. We have transformers that allow you to manipulate the data as it goes through the process. And we have the output feature types on the right, and that's where the data is going. Go ahead. Yeah, so I, I guess a key thing here is I, I don't have to write any code. I can just do this all. If I understand my data model, I, I just do this entire thing visual. I'm not expected to be a, a Python or any kind of other programmer. Nope. Uh, you can if you want. We have can a Python you? caller. Yeah. We have a TCL caller if you're really masochistic. And, um, <laughs> Sorry, I'm a Python guy. <laughs> I, I didn't notice. <laughs> okay. and, and so yeah, you can, and, and we have the tools that you you can extend this if you want. But today we're going to st stick with the simpler, simpler um, processes. Um, on the left-hand side, we have a navigator. Um, 
this just gives you a list of your, your readers here, your writers, allows you to change various settings on the readers and writers. Uh, also, I have a quick question. Sure. Um, was this CAD drawing you looked at, is it georeferenced? Was that CAD drawing actually in the right place? In this case, no. Okay. We're going to pretend it is, but okay. no, it isn't. Okay. okay. Um, and georeferencing yeah, is something we're could almost do an entire webinar on, it okay. on its okay. own. Um, but I will show you one thing we can do if you do if your 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 AutoCAD file is georeferenced. That's a good good point to go into. Um, we read the coordinate systems from some DWG files, uh, not all of them. I think the, the only the ones created with AutoCAD Map. Okay. But we allow you to set a coordinate system. So if you know the coordinate system, you know your data is in state plane, sure, say you Washington State or Kentucky or whatever. You can type in the state plane here, and that will georeference it on the fly. The other thing is, um, I believe we also support is that, and let's go into this one. Anyway, okay, can't find it. Sure. But if you have a PRJ file, like you commonly get with a shape file with the yep. same name as the as the AutoCAD or MicroStation file, yep. I believe we we support that to assign it to referencing as well. Okay. So. That's that's like those. So here we have the, the the reader writer settings, and here we have there's some settings in here, not so not so many in the CAD uh, format. But these are the individual feature level settings, and like I said, for CAD there's not that many of them. Um, down here we have a transformer gallery. Uh, we also can, if you know the name of your tra transformer, which you end up doing um, once you start using it a bit, you can just type the the start typing on the canvas itself. It will mm -hmm. bring it up. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, so the transformers. The transformers, generally you have an input port, you have an output port. You click on the little sprocket here, and that brings up the properties dialog, and then you can manipulate uh, the various properties of that transformer. Okay, so let's switch back, I think, to the slides now. Um, uh, no, yeah, 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 that's good. There's a, a, another couple things. Um, sometimes you don't actually get polylines. You would just get lines. Yeah. And with FME, you would just use a different. There's just one transformer. You pump all the stuff into. Yeah. Builds the polygons. Spoiler uh, alert. Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, wait, wait, we will. Yeah, we will come up to that. Uh, that one. That, that particular one later. Okay. In, in the show today. <laughs> so. Okay. Uh, so that was foreshadowing. Maybe. A little bit of foreshadowing. Oh, okay. Yeah. So here's here's the workspace we just saw, and um, there there are a bunch of sections to it. Um, like I said, we want to look at the position in the label to determine which uh, which attribute goes in or which label goes into which attribute. However, the rotated labels make this a little bit more complicated yes. because we can't just go on y value. Yeah. So the first transformer we do is the first process we do is uh, we're going to rotate the text. Just by it, so the, the negative value of its, of its uh, existing rotation, to rotate, rotate it to zero. Yeah. Uh, but before we do that, because these actually are state plane coordinates, and they're quite a long ways from the zero, and if we rotate one way, rotate the other way, they might not get back exactly where they started out. Yes. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with a geometry extractor, and that's it's a, that's like a a, a checkpoint, or yeah. um, you know, it, it just grabs the geometry at that point, stores it an attribute. We rotate it into position. Um, we extract the y value mm -hmm. as an attribute, yeah. and then we replace the geometry from that checkpoint. Right. So now, uh, we, we, whatever changes we've made to the geometry have been discarded. Yes. Which is that's a kind of neat feature. Yes. Um, yes. And that way, you can, we have, it's kind of like you can do what we call destructive processing. You yeah. can rip apart a geometry to calculate something exactly, and then restore it back to where yeah. it was and without having the result you want. Yeah, without having to go back through all the steps again. Perfect. Okay. The next uh, uh, transformer is the uh, we're going to look at is that point on area over layer. So let me just skip back to the main one here. So we've got the rotated labels. Um, they're going to meet the parcels in the point on area over layer. Now the parcels come in as a polygon, so that's all good. And we're going to overlay the 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 points of those labels as points on the polygon and take their information and apply them to that polygon. And what we're going to do is at the bottom of the point on area overlayer, there's a, a here thing called a list. Yep. And so instead of just grabbing the, the, the first text it finds, it's going to take all the text it finds, it's going to put in this ad address list. So it's going to have the text string, which we want, and also it's going to have that Y value that we extracted from the text. That's going to be in that list as well. Hmm. So 
the next the, after that, what we want to do is we have this this list of uh, text strings and y values inside yep. the polygon. We want to sort this list yep. by that y value. So yep. that's I mean that's a relative value that shows you where in the polygon it is. Yeah. We sort that by the y value, and then we kick that out and we rename these addresses. Yes. We rename the 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 the, 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 the attributes in the in the list out to the proper attributes on the way out. Because we know we sorted it, we know the first one yeah. is going to be the, the street, street name. Number, street number, yeah, and next and is the street, street name, next is yeah. the ID number. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, so let's skip out of that and let's have a look at see what it looks like in ArcMap. So that's our uh, that's our finished product. Yeah. We zoom in a bit; it looks a little prettier. So we have our polygons. If we click on a polygon. We see it's got the, the street name, it's got the street number, and it's got the ID number. Perfect. And I've just set it up so it labels on the street name, name and number without yep. the ID number. Yeah. And there's our finished product, the geodatabase oh. ready to go. Awesome. Awesome. That's okay. great. So now that was a fairly simple, uh, straightforward solution. Right. And 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 so if there's obvious questions. I'm here. You use the the location of the at, of the annotation to associate with polygons. Yeah. Now it. There's other ways you can, sometimes you might have a line and you might have annotation. Do we have any, does FME have any way to associate a, a, That's coming up as well. That's coming, that's up, that's as coming well. up as oh well. Goodness, yeah, yeah. yeah, it's a full feature broadcast. Today. I tell you. Okay, so yeah, this is this, what made this possible. We can exploit the annotation and the, the geometry location. Yep. Okay, so now this is this Ooh, is our. This looks like real CAD. This is real CAD. We're going for a real world example now. And. Um, What's it? Uh, what was it saying? Oh yeah, our last CAD file is. It reminds me of that crocodile Dundee saying, you know, that's not a CAD file. This is a CAD file. <laughs> so let's get let's get on this. And it's a little bit intense at first, but let's see what right, we can do with right, it. Right. And really, the point here is, is you, you know, you could easily look at this CAD file and become overwhelmed. And so basically, you just chip away step by step, identify, you know, go layer by layer, element by element, and then you just build up your rule based on how to move it across, and uh, and and just do it in bite-sized chunks. Exactly. So we've got here. We've got our CAD file. We've got if we look at it, we've got lines and arcs. And I notice the arc is on a fairly cryptic level, but everything seems to be on its own level, which is nice. Although the levels are kind of cryptic. Um, but the cool thing, and this is if you're working with CAD files, this is kind of a must. Is most CAD files are built, are built to standards. Yeah. And what we can do is get into the right folder. We have a CAD standard for this file. Okay. And luckily, it comes in a whole bunch of Excel files. We look yep. at roadway levels, and we see that there's our our, our layer. Yeah. And now we have a feature description which tells us what exactly that means, which is oh. nice to have. That's so perfect. we can use this as part of our, our, our process to figure out where we're going to put all, all the, the, um, the layers. Okay. There we go. So the other thing we're going to look at is we have a bunch of text here. Um, some, of it's, uh, some of it's beside lines. Some of it's on leaders. Yeah. And sometimes we have true leaders, like this is a dimension. Ooh. Other times we have sort of fake leaders where this is just a line. Yeah. And for lots of fun, we have these kind of callouts. Right. And where, so we're, when we go to GIS, we're going to want to move that label that's in that callout and associate it with that line at the end of the callout. Or at least move it to the point where, that it's pointing to. That's at, right. At this, at this point. Wow. So our conversion plan, I mean, I'm not going to do the whole file today. It's, it's too complex and it would take a, a couple hours. But I'm going to go through some of the more key points that, that we can do to, as a start to sort of yeah. get started with this data. And after that, it's just sort of more and more uh, of these things. Right. So you're basically going to show us the step-by-step. -step. So people watching, you can just see the, the, the thought process you go through when you attack this. Exactly. So um, for our conversion plan, we're going, to take the, we're going to take the proposed road lines, which are these ones and these ones. Uh, we're going to, we have here some labeled stations. If we zoom in on those, we'll see we have station labels. And what we're going to do is we're going to take those and convert those to a point feature at the end of their line where they're pointing to. Okay. Uh, we're going to create, we're going to uh, take these and we're going to cut some of this text. We're going to convert that to annotation. Yeah. We're also going to move this to the head of its leader line so it's in the, it's in the correct place. Okay. Um, and we're also going to do that for 
our callouts. We're going to okay. take our callouts. We're going to figure out where, based on this callout, that it's supposed to be good, and we're going to move that. Okay. And finally, there's some text here. Whoops. Let's get my, my pan here. We have things like these these uh, tables. Yeah. And now we're just going to take these tables straight over into annotation. And yeah. Just because you know it's hard to know what to do. Exactly. Yeah. So we're just we're just going to grab them and throw them in. So so if we had an associated database, we could we could also move those into a database if we wanted. We could, and and we want to get fancy. We could we could look sure. at the headings and and figure out how this goes. Yeah. But uh, today that's that's a little bit beyond our scope. Absolutely. Okay. So let's have a look at the workspace. Okay, so the workspace is a little bit more complex today. All right, this, this time, if we zoom out, we see that yeah, it's a bit bigger. But really, we're, we're working on things step by step. Um, the first part here, and this is a microstation-based thing, is uh, some of our labels are what we call multi-text. Right. Now, when we read the multi-text label, we have a choice of breaking it up or, or, or keeping it as a single piece. I've kept it as a single piece okay. for convenience. But in that case, the, the, the actual text string is the number of that label. And the 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 actual parts of that label are, are stored in uh, list attribute on the format attributes. Right. So this is just a little thing that takes them all and puts them out all, all together uh, into a proper piece of text separated by uh, line feeds. Okay. So uh, next we have an attribute filter. What this does is here's where we're separating up by our layers. Yeah. We're grabbing each layer. We're saying, well, you guys are going to work on here. You guys were going to work on here. Okay. So you do each layer at a time. Each layer at a time. Right. Um, here we have the, the parts that are actually going to be doing the work. Now, it looks fairly simple here, but we have these little green transformers. Right. And what these green transformers is are, are custom transformers. Yeah. And the, the, the best way to think of this is as a macro. Right. Um, so if we look at this extract callouts, we've got a tab up here, a matching yeah. tab that says extract callouts. Yeah. And here we've got yeah. our our logic yeah. that we're yeah. going to do. Yeah. yeah, This really um, improves the readability of the workspace as well. It does. And I noticed that one of them you used, at least one of them you used several times in the workspace, which yeah, that's, is really nice. That's true. So we have two two uh, layers with callouts on. So instead of duplicating that whole yeah. process, we've got it in the, in the, in the um, custom transformer and I just uh, create a second copy. Yeah. And these will work completely independently. The, the data doesn't mix, you get mixed up between them so we don't have to merge the data, run it through process, separate it out again. Yeah. And, yeah. Nice. And it, it, it does make things a bit simpler. So we've got custom transformers for most of the, the uh, different um, processes we're going through. Okay. Um, now, if you wanted to share these custom transformers, you could do that as well. Yes, you can. You can create a custom transformer. Uh, now, these are, are kind of stored within the workspace. Yeah. If you want to, you could go into these, uh, and go file, save as, uh, export as custom transformer. Yeah. And then you, you can ship that out to people um, sure. using their own tra uh, their own workspaces. Um, we also have, and I should this kind of brings us to, we have the FME store. Yeah. And the FME store transformers are. Actually, if you've got an internet connection on your on your 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 FME machine, um, you'll see that there are some uh, transformers that have a little download symbol beside them. Mm -hmm. That those are FME store transformers. Okay. Then you can automatically download just by clicking on them. Sure. Okay. Okay. So let's and I just want to show one more thing, and we're going to be using these a lot. Is, oops, there we go. The Format uh, attributes that I talked to you before, they're all in here. You can see there's a lot of them. Wow. Um, I've turned on a few that I'm going to be working with. Right. So sometimes you got to go in, and if you know the format attributes you're going to need for some things, you just go turn them on here. And what that does is exposes them for the workspace because there are literally hundreds of them. We don't have them all automatically exposed. Otherwise, every time you open a transformer, it would have 8,500 you know, attributes. Yeah. So we only expose the ones we want to work with within the workspace. Okay. Okay, so let's get back to the slides, and we'll show you how each of these pieces works. Okay, there's our first start. Now, the first the, the first one is we want to leave move the label to the head of the leader dimension. Now, this, right. is, this is a dimension line. This is a this is a, a separate entity within MicroStation that's specifically for dimensions. In this case, a leader, and we want to move the text from where it is to the head of that line. Um, there's our workspace. This is the, these are both using that that uh, that process. This is the pro, this is the process itself. Um, we want to separate it. We want to from our input data. We want to separate the text from the lines. We want to extract dimension lines from the regular uh, normal lines. We kick those out on their own. Yeah. 
we have a vertex creator and a neighbor finder. And a neighbor finder, this is kind of the, the one you were talking about, the associates lines with text. Yeah. And I think we show you how it works a bit uh, here. So when we get to the neighbor finder, we are going to, oh, I should first, first get here. Sorry. We have these two vertex creators. And what these vertex creators do is they replace the point that we, we have of that line or mm -hmm. the geometry we have of that line with a point at a specified location. And what we're getting that specified location from is in these, uh, in these uh, format attributes. So we have on the dimension line itself, we have the text insertion point. Yes. Uh, X and Y. Oops, I skipped the, I moved that up a bit. But X and Y are, are here. And what we want, so what we want to do is move this point to, because this is the point that it places the text. Yeah. We want to move that text up closer to the line it's working with. So we're yeah. going to move that up, up here. Up here. Yeah. So we replace the, the line itself with a point there. Yeah. We replace that, that text, and we look at the text, it's got the attributes IGDS insertion X, IGDS insertion Y, that's mm -hmm. the original insertion point. We're going to move that up here. So now we've got a point here and a point there. Right. They're nice and close together. Yes. Now when we kick it into the neighbor finder, it's working with two points that are fairly close together yeah. rather than a line and a piece of text that may look slightly offset yeah. from each other. Yeah. Yeah, so the information nice. is in there. We just have to use it. Yeah. So now we've got the neighbor finder. Um, it's going to find its nearest neighbor. Mm -hmm. And there that, you go. That's, that's, a, that's a result there. And it's going to merge the text from that text onto that uh, that point there. Yeah. And now we are in the correct location. Yeah. yeah. Very nice. Okay. So the next one is we have stations. Uh, this is somewhat similar, but here we have lines instead of text. Yes. So, or sorry, lines instead of dimensions. So we are going to work with these these lines. So a slightly different process. We also have two pieces of text instead of one text, uh, multi-text string. So that makes mm -hmm. it a little more interesting as well. Mm-hmm. So. We again use the neighbor finder. Yep. That's going to find the, uh, the the text that's nearest this line. Yep. Um, again, what the neighbor finder has, and let me just skip back to the workspace. Has the list feature, and we're going to use a list. Yeah. Again, on this, so we're we're going to get the they are going to get the, the both pieces of text and list. Same thing we did with the the, the, um, the overlayer in the previous example. Yeah. We're going to do a quick test on this list, and we're going to say, hey, does one of these values have a plus inside? Yes. Yeah, that's the station. Okay. okay. That one's the state. We know which one is the station. We see the other one to, the, to yep. the, the offset, and away we go. Perfect. Okay. And the next one is the callouts, the placement point. Yeah. So, again, this one's kind of similar in that we can build a polygon like we did for the, uh, for the first example. Yeah. Um, we associate the uh, the text of the polygon to get the information. In, we now have a, we can get a polygon now with this text information, the, the proper label. But how do we get this point? Mm -hmm. Well, luckily, and very luckily for me, because I just found this out, is <laughs> we have a transformer called the spike remover. Yeah. And that spike remover removes spikes from polygons, which is kind of cool if you've yeah. got spiky polygons. But yeah. what also it, it gives you out is it tells you what the points it removed. Yes. So that's what we want you here. You wanted the remove point, we want of course. The remove point. So yeah. we're going to have a polygon with this text associated, but we're also going to have a point with that text associated. Yeah. Yeah. We toss this out. We don't need it. We have this point, and we're golden. We're good to go. Yeah. 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 Right? Yeah. Yeah. So you can see, I noticed in all these pictures, you have the, the image on the side of what it looks like in the data inspector. Yeah. And so that's really key because that shows you the, the placement point of, of the text, which can help you, you know, when you're doing the neighbor finder to find the buffers or the area of, that you wanted to look at and things like that. Exactly, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so. And some of this, I mean, required some experimentation. Like I oh, said, this absolutely. one was like, how am I going to figure out where this fight is? Oh, yeah. hey, this point there, cool. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah, try the transformers and, and see what they do, and, and they'll sort of suggest possibilities to you. Okay, and now we get to the, the, the straight tables. Um, those are we're just going straight over. Okay. Uh, the, the, and the beauty of this is that it's a neat thing about the uh, the Esri. Most Esri feature classes are limited to a single geometry. Yeah. Except the annotation class. The annotation class can have points. It can have annotation. It can have polygons. It can have lines. And we've got all of these in that table. Okay. So we, and we just throw them straight on over. We say well, this is all annotation, and Esri goes, woohoo! I got it. Okay. Okie dokie. Perfect. So this is what, let's see what it looks like in uh, ArcMap.
So there we go. We have our stations. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. On the on, on the, the lines. lines. We have our oops, wrong way scrolling. There we go. We have the, the lines. We have the table. Yep. Yeah. And we have these these leader text have been moved, and the call out text has right. been moved as well. Wow. So I mean, there's more things to do. We could we could go ahead and start associating some of this text with text with the now it's works. much easier. Yeah, but I mean it's a it's step by step process. Absolutely, absolutely. So that's so kind that's, of a yeah, that's a good yeah, example yeah, of some of the things yeah. you can do. Well, well, you know, and what you've shown here is a great step by step. You have text all over. It's got dimensions. The first thing you got to do is move it close to the line that you want to associate. Now your idea of associating this text with this or this annotation with the line. To create attributes is much simpler. Exactly, yeah. and one of the, some of the other tools we give you in work, Workbench itself are you see these bookmarks here? Yeah. Um, this is another way of, of helping to organize your data. You yeah. can wrap a bookmark about something, tell you what yeah. it's for, and now you know the, this becomes less and less complex. It looks yeah. scary at first, but then you see it, it it breaks down to simpler and simpler yeah. and simpler, and you can just work on a piece at a time. Yeah. And when you come back later in six months and you want to change something, you with the book with the use of bookmarks and these labels, you can easily zero in to where what you need to be worried about. Yeah. yeah. And exactly, and that's the same way you can annotate each transformer as to to what it does as well. Perfect. Okay. So I think. Wow, that's awesome. Okay, what made this possible? Our happy little transformers, our spatial, spatial, can you say that one? Spatial. Okay, manipulation and filtering transformers. Absolutely. Thank you. <laughs> um, so neighbor finders, spike remover, area builders, and uh, the overlayers, all those have, have come in yep. handy. Yep. Um, and definitely with, with, the, with the traditional CAD data. Yeah, where those relationships are usually not built for you. This They're, is the best use of spike remover I've ever seen. <laughs> yeah, I mean it's imp it's imp you're basically changing a concrete uh, implied relationship into a concrete yeah, relationship. Yeah, that's great. Okay, so yeah, so th so the next thing that um, that people are often interested in is you you might be able to move you might need to move your CAD data into a specific data model. And um, and FME is um, is you know all about data model. That's what those transformers are all about. Yeah. Is transforming the data from one data model or CAD standard in this case to a specific model. In this case, you're going to move to the Esri water model. Yeah. Um. There. That's there, a nice slide, by the way. <laughs> yes. <laughs> so in, in this case, what we're going to do is we've been our customer had a defined data model that they wanted to hit inside the uh, ArcGIS, inside yep. the GeoDatabase. Yep. Um, so they sent us a, a workspace XML document, which is essentially a document that it, that you can export from ArcGIS, and it describes the uh, the entire data model for you, what doesn't necessarily have data in it. XML is a beautiful thing. Uh, yes. <laughs> So we're gonna I'm gonna show you how we can we can work with these things in uh, in uh, FME. So let's get rid of this, and I'll show you what we've got here. Let's see. So this is this XML uh, template document they've they've sent yeah. us, and we're gonna use this in, in a couple of ways. So when we're gonna we're gonna start up our works our, our, our workspace. Um, Normally, you know, we, we've just been we we started with the input, and that determines, you know, the, the the output feature classes we want. Now here we've been given the output feature classes. So how do we get those in? Yeah. So first thing we're going to add a writer. Add a, we're going to add a geodatabase writer. Okay. Uh, it's got to be the Arc Objects writer, so Arc right. has to be installed on this computer. Okay. Uh, we won't set the data set for now. Under parameters, and this is where you can have different settings for the. Okay. Uh, yeah, the, the writer. We're gonna pick a template file, and what oh, okay. what our writer is gonna do is use this template file and to to create the output geodatabase. Yeah. So let's craft the template file, and and where did you get this template file? It was supplied by the customer. Okay. Okay. Sorry, this is not. Go. So it's looking for an XML template file. We're okay. to go there. Yeah. Um, now the, the interesting thing is we're going to use that for the template file, but we're also going to use that to help define our output feature classes. Oh, okay. So our feature class or table definition, we go in automatic. The automatic will create a feature class for the, uh, whatever our readers got, but yep. we, don't have any read we don't have any readers yet. Right. So that's not going to work. Manual, we can do it all ourselves. Yeah, that sucks. So uh, let's try import from data set. Okay. And we go okay. And it's gonna. It says import writer feature types, and it says as Geo is expecting it as a geo database. Right. But the cool thing is, we don't have to pick the same reader as the writer. We can pick a different reader. So we're gonna type 
we're going to use the GeoDatabase XML workspace document again. Oh, okay. And then we're going to pick that data set. They go OK. And it's going to go think to itself. Hello, Mr. Arpages. Can you help me out? Yeah, yeah. This is a bit of a. There we go. There we hey. go. So a lot of stuff was going on there. Yeah, a lot of stuff was going on. So now, if we go OK, we've got all these output yep. uh, uh, data types, yep. feature types, and we also have on them their full attribute definitions. OK. And even cool things like range domains. Oh, are perfect. all predefined. Like all that stuff is in, in that workspace XML. Yeah. So you don't have to do any of the work. You just grab it, and now your data model is ready to go. You can use as many as, you, as these as you want, yeah. or as few of them as you want, um, depending on the data you've, come, you've got coming in. So let's look at the workspace that we have built up for this one. And again, we see we have... Uh, Can you just humor me for a minute? Let's sure. And show me just quickly, how, how do I build a bookmark? Like if I want to put a bookmark around those oh, two, sure. just... Uh, sure, you just, just highlight them and yep. uh, grab them. And then right-click, yep. and bookmark. Okay, perfect. Okay, good. I'm happy. Ooh, and then, and if you're if you're tasteful, you can go change the color. Change the color, whatever you Something want. Something okay. moldy. Perfect. Okay. That's a little bit more. Perfect. Yeah. Yep. There was a it's, question. It's about early, that, so. yeah, it's early morning. So. Yeah. Okay. So <laughs> now we have we've grabbed a, f a few of the feature types we're coming into. Now we've got our. You know, this is AutoCAD uh, object data, which yep. is. CAD data in it, it's basically a GIS in a CAD format. Right. So it's got the proper attributes and everything. So right. this is really. So what other flavors do we support? Do we support Civil 3D? Uh, yes, we support Civil 3D, AutoCAD Map. Um, Civil 3D will also have attribution. Yep. Uh, AutoCAD Map will have attribution. We've got not one, but two AutoCAD readers. Okay. Uh, one of which is supplied by Autodesk, but only works on Windows, and the other one is uh, Open Design Alliance. Yep. And it, it, we use that as well because it also runs on Mac and Unix. Perfect. Okay. So that's why you, you, when you type, uh, you want to say you want a reader for DWG. Let's try right. take DWG. You get a bunch. Yeah, 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 yeah. And of course, the nice thing about FME is once you connect to the reader as and pick the list, the technique is the same regardless of the source format. Exactly. So these have a attributes coming in, so we don't have to create those attribute associations. But what the what we do have to do, change is the data model here. Yeah. So some of these attributes have to be mapped to other attributes, and there's a couple of ways we can do this. One of them is the attrib attribute value mapper. And here we just pick an attribute, a source attribute, destination attribute. We have a bunch of source values, and we have the destination values they map to. Oh, okay. Okay. Now that's that's pretty straightforward, but it only does one at a time. Yeah. And so it can end up taking up a lot of real, real estate. This is like our go-to guy these days. It's our uh, attribute creator, and it does a whole bunch of things. Yeah. Uh, one of the neat things it can do is you create attributes, you can set the values, you can set the values to come from other values, yeah. or you can have uh, optional, like conditional values as right. well. There you go. So this works out like kind of a, a, a value mapping as well. You have yep. small, medium, large, maps to 20, 25, 30. If you have nothing else, it maps to 10. Yeah. Um, but there's a neat one. I think it's here. Oops. Right, so you can have with. you can have fairly complex yes. uh, test criteria, right? So this begins with DPFS, begins with D, begins with T. So just that value just has to begin with something, and then you can map it to that. So it's a very it's a very, it's it's a it's very much flexible, more, yeah, yeah, much more flexible mapper. Yeah. So essentially, that's what we're doing. We're just mapping the the the, the data values over. Yeah. Uh, we're separating the the uh, the, the geometry because mm -hmm. only one type of geometry can, can go into the mains. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then we're going to output to the, uh, the the geodatabase. So if we look at that output, and then you see here we have all of our mains and 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 valves, etc. That we we mapped in, but yep. we also have here. All of the, the 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 various values, all of the settings that came yeah. in from that uh, that XML template file. Yeah. yeah. So we've com we've combined kind of the best of both worlds. Wow, that's great. Okay. So yeah, what made this possible? Or import feature types from GeoDatabase XML. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Uh, ask the agents. So yeah, so just a reminder, we see questions um, going by um, in the, the chat and, and some of the things that I've asked Dave to do are based on the questions. So please do um, keep asking questions. We also have um, Annabelle and Mark and Mark Stokes um, well, we standing didn't, by. We didn't introduce some of the pictures. I know, there should have been pictures here. Okay, oh, well, next time. Sorry to Annabelle and Mark. Yeah. Um, they have better hair than we do. So, <laughs> so, uh, But yeah, keep asking questions and even after they'll all get answered, whether they're done on the air or, uh, but we'll, we will get back to you. Yeah, we may have to give you a follow-up email, but yeah. we will get back to you on all, yeah. the, all the questions. Perfect. Okay, our next, our next mission um, is validation. Now, Moving your, your your CAD data into GIS, not I mean let's let's I mean I hate to, to say this about the CAD files, but you know, not all of them are good. Yeah. Some of them because it is kind of a done drafting style. Mm -hmm, sometimes mm -hmm, snaps mm -hmm. don't get snapped. Yeah, because it, because it don't get filled. Mm -hmm. Because some of them, let's face it, they were created initially for paper. Exactly. And as long as your paper pen went you know, within a, a fuzziness of the pen tip, hey, it was all good. Exactly. And the human visual system is fantastic for just knowing what was meant, right? Yeah. 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 So now, validation is a very big topic, and it's so big we actually had our, uh, a complete <laughs> webinar about it. <laughs> so and we have I'm, transformers dedicated to it. Yes. Yeah. So I'm not going to go into great detail here. Um, we have an online demo that I'm going to sort of show you the back end of. Yeah. Um, that's the first link there, and I believe it's being chatted out to you now. Uh, if you want, you can click on that demo and play along at home. Yep. And uh, there's also the complete validation webinar that you can have a look at. Yep. Um, please not now. Yep. But, and when this is finished, you know, <laughs> you might want to move into another webinar. And this is pre-recorded and yep. available on our on our on our pre-recorded webinars. Perfect. So let's move to this. But yeah, but the point really is is that one of the big uses of FME as well is for moving data is is just validating the data. You might have people in the field collecting data and you expect them to adhere to your CAD standard and um, you can then make, in this case, there's a web service which we're, that you can create with a workspace. It's going to make sure that these files that, that it sees adhere to the, the standard that we're, that we're looking for. Yes, indeed. Okay, so this is, this is the workspace. It looks fairly complex, but it's, it's, it's pretty simple. We have, we have our input uh, CAD data here. And we're going to be doing two simple tests. One is a test of the, we're going to test the geometry. And for that, we use a geometry validator. Um, oh, this is an old one. OK, it, it's OK. And let's just test if it's simple or valid geometry. But you know, yeah. let's show a new one. The geometry, we've got a new geometry validator. It's exciting. Yeah, it is. It's powerful. So now this is the new one. We've got all sorts of tests in there that uh, we can check for null geometry ports, duplicates and checking points, degenerate geometries. So if you have a line that's actually a point or you have a, 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 like a, a polygon that's turned into a line because the, the way its vertices uh, are set, it will find those. It will find self-intersections. Uh, it's got some 3D um, validation as well, which really don't come into this. Um, OGC tests. Yeah. You know. Yeah, so it's got a lot, of, a, lot of a lot of things that you can check for, and you've also got settings that you can, uh, you know, yeah. drill down a little bit and, and change those. Yeah. And it's also got a repair mode if you yeah. want to yeah. just fix things on the fly yeah. rather than, than yeah. validate. And if you turn on multiple, you can specify the order they're done in. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah, cool. So, uh, yeah, that's the you new... You didn't know that. No, that's new by me. Okay. Even when you work here for a long time, you still learn new things. <laughs> yeah, every day. Yeah. So that's the, that's a the simple geometry validation. Uh, and we're also going to do an attribute validation as well. We're just going to make sure the diameter is not equal to zero. In this case, right. we say equal, but we're going to take the fail or the, the past output, and that's flag and error. So if the diameter is zero, we go, yeah. that's not the right kind of pipe. Yeah. And um, we're going to we're going to uh, set an error. Now, the interesting thing about this is we're right we're reading from. Uh, AutoCAD, we're writing out to a GeoDatabase ST, so now we're writing to a database. Okay. So the thing we want, don't want to do is we don't want to start writing features to the database before we're sure the entire file is going to pass or fail. Right. So, but we're reading in these, these features one by one. So this is why the, 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 the structure gets a little more complex here mm -hmm. in that the features we're testing are not actually going to the database. Okay. The features we're testing, we're going to use this variable setter, and that's going to set a flag. And, and if any, if we get a failure on any feature, we're going to set this flag that says, "Hey, stop. We don't. Okay. We don't. We don't want this file." 
And then we're going to have another st another stream uh, of features, a complete copy of those features is kind of going to come through here and get sent into a feature holder. Ah. Feature holder is kind of like a holding pen. Right. And it's going to hold your features until they have all come in. And if the features have all come in here, it means they've all gone through the test. Yes. Then it's going to let them all out, and they're going to check the variable retriever, and they're going to look at this flag go, good or bad. Right. And if the flag's good, hey, We're away good. they go. If they're bad, oh, we're shutting you down. Oh, I like it. Yeah. And because we're writing to a database, uh, we're going to write things a little differently. We're going to use the, the FMEDB operation. That we're going to, instead of writing just an insert feature, we're going to write insert features, and we're also going to clear out that that existing features from that particular block. Right. So it's going to be an update of that block. Sure. So we've got two streams here. Here we create a FME a delete feature that's going to mm -hmm. say delete everything in block uh, in block mm -hmm. number such and such. Mm -hmm. And here we're going to go, okay, this, this, here's all insert features, away you go. And we're going to send both to the database. So it's going to right. clear out, it's going to, it's going to clear out the, the, the existing data and then write new. So yeah. it's to be a proper update. Um, the other part of this is we have um, reports generated. Yeah. So if we if you get a failure, we're going to create a group uh, a, a report in HTML using the XML templater that lets you create any XML or uh, HTML. Beautiful. Yes. XML is beautiful. Yeah, and that's going to come out uh, as a report, and then we also have a past report as well. So we're actually writing out two uh, data sets. We're going to write it to the HTML file to a te okay. text file. Okay. And uh, the SD. So let's just say, for sake of argument, that I didn't want to go out to HTML. I wanted to go to Excel. Could I also have my error report instead, or as well, go out to Excel and also have pictures in the Excel document? <laughs> uh, yes, I believe you can. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And I think, and we have that as well. Um, that's also we can also provide you with that because that's yeah. a well-known. Yeah. So. Yeah. Because Excel is also a very, you know, Excel is like XML without the M. Yeah, yeah. So just to show you what some of the reports look like, um, we have a good report that just says, hey, it's completed, number of features added, and we have the the naughty report, which is you know quite cooler. Yeah. And then here we list we list the idea of the offending features. We yeah. give a little map of the offending feature, and we say why it why it's wrong. Very good. Um, you know, and what you you know this kind of works nice on the desktop, but where this really shines, quite frankly, is if you use our FME server product. Yes. And the way you can do that is you can just publish this up to server. Any workspace can be published up to our FME server. Yeah. Um, you have a file published to FME server yeah. space here or yeah. setting here. Yeah. And of course, FME server could be FME could be an instance in FME cloud. So yeah. so if you want to play with FME server, there's a number of ways you can do it. One, you can get it yourself and and download and install it, or you can go to fmecloud.com and fire up your own FME server. And we give you, um, you know, we give you some funds so that it, uh, you can play around with FME Cloud slash FME Server at no cost. So, yeah. yeah. Looks like I actually do have to publish it. Okay. File publish. Yeah. Let's run through this process. So, okay. Publish it to Kern. My super secret uh, password. Yeah. That, uh, everybody around here uses. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Okay. We're gonna set this to QA repository. Okay. Yeah. QA. It's gonna upload a data file. Uh, in this case, you don't need that. We don't need that because it's going to take the. Uh, yeah. Oh, actually, we do need this. Oh, okay. This is our connection to the STU. Ah, that's your STU uh, connection file. Yeah, yeah. So in this case, it's going to upload the STU connection file as well, so it can talk to the database. Yeah. Now we we can check the uh, services we want to register this with. Yeah. Job submitter, we don't want. We want it essentially. This is going to write to the database. Yes. So really, what is coming back from this workspace is our report. Our HTML. It's an HTML report. Yeah. So we want that stream back to the user's browser. Okay. So we're going to pick data streaming. Okay. Go in there and make sure it's going to get the text line reader. Yep. And ACAD reader writer is or reader is the source. Yeah. The file we're going to upload. So I'm going to publish that. Okay. And how are we doing with time? Oh, we've got ten minutes left. Okay. So if we Refresh this. There's our workspace. Perfect. And if we click on the workspace, it comes up with a service, data streaming. Sure, we'll take that service. Okay, so here's our workspace. Uh, there's a few things we can do. It's it's asking for. We have a published parameter, which is the AutoCAD file to. So test. we can drag one up there if we want it. Yeah. So we have yeah we have some options. We can broad resources on the server, but let's face it, we didn't upload the file to the server. Sure. So let's just upload. Let's upload the file now. So we'll start with the bad one because it's bad guys are always more fun. Absolutely. And we'll just drag and drop that onto there. It uploads. 
We pick select from recently uploaded files. We'll click our bad sample. Yeah. And we'll right. run the workspace. And look at that. There. Oh, that was fast. Yeah. There you go. Well, because it actually didn't write anything to the database. And went, oh, well, you got problems. Yeah. Right? yeah. Big, big, big troubles. Big troubles. So it sends you back a map of your troubles. Yeah. So that's that's that that allows you to take that workspace you've created, and rather than people running on a desktop, they can yeah. now you've got you create a little service that everybody in the company can run. Yeah, and you, and you're going to see how useful this would be to people in the field too, who have the who can collect the data but aren't going to run be running FME on their you know on their laptop out in the field. Yeah, and the I've got a I've got a pre canned version of where it, when it did work. Okay, show you what it looks like. Okay. And this may take a while. No, okay. Fast, fast, fast. Go, go, go. Mm -hmm. Okay, it's mm -hmm. coming. Um, let's get back to the slides. Okay. And so if it was successful, then you would get a HTML that would just say, hey, your yeah. data upload was successful. Yeah, that small one. I, I yeah. before before did this. Yeah. Basic yeah. report. Yeah. No. So, okay, this is what it was supposed to look like in ArcMap. Okay. Um, but I'm reading from the database, so it's, it's taking a while. Yeah. So... You did yeah, that. Did awesome. So these slides survey. are here, so you can follow along later. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this uh, here again, we use the geometry validator and tester transformers to do the validation. Yeah. HTML template to create the HTML reports. Yeah. And that uh, FMEDB operation allows yeah. you to set the updates yeah. and deletes. Yeah. So. And since um, geometry is half the data, um, for new um, for FME 2016 beta, check out there's a brand new attribute validator, Ooh. which really makes you know all kinds of attribute validation much easier than ever before. So. Okay. But we're not allowed to talk about that because we're doing this in FME 2015. Okay. Okay. So we've 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 done a lot of going from CAD to GIS, and yeah. really it's it's a bi-directional um, webinar. So we yeah. should give some some yeah. time to GIS to CAD. Um, now the big thing about GIS to CAD is GIS is essentially uh, points, lines, polygons, all of the symbology and everything is in the is in the, the, the GIS program itself. So yes, GIS, yes. It does its own li labeling on the fly, mm -hmm. it creates mm -hmm. symbols on the fly, etc. Mm -hmm. CAD really doesn't do that. CAD, mm -hmm. everything's sort of uh, static and created, yeah. concrete. So what we want to do is go, go from a GIS layer to a CAD layer and do some nice pretty labels that you make a nice cartographic map that you can print out and your mom can get downtown and, and work her way around SkyTrain and everything. Beautiful. So this is the workspace. Um, let's let's see that in real life because that's a little big. Yeah. Okay, there we go. So we're basically bringing in um, our GIS layers. We've got the public streets, we've got the public, the parks, the shorelines, rapid transit lines, etc. Um, we're doing um, some work on them to create buffers and just to make them, you know, pretty, get in some filled buffers, make them polygons instead yeah. of lines, make them look good. But the key thing to this workspace is this part here. It's the map text labeler. Yeah. And this allow, this basically lets us create all those nice labels in the proper places so they interf don't interfere with other labels, so they don't interfere with the geometry, and they look good and they're useful. Yeah. And this is a this is a key transformer for your, for anyone who's doing labels. Um, you can add all the the feature types that come into it. Yeah. You bring up the configuration screen, and here's where you can set how each of those is going to be used. Right. Right. Now you can use them as a label. Yep. Or you can use them an, as an obstacle. Oh. You don't have to label them, but sure. you might want you might want your labels to dodge something. You can make them an That's obstacle. That's right. That's so, true. Okay. Of all the all the feature types you bring in, you get a choice of label and obstacle, and they can be both as yeah. well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, here we have parts which are just labeled but not yeah. obstacles. Yeah. And here we have the shoreline which is a uh, not labeled but an obstacle. Okay. Now for each of these uh, feature types for the labeling, you can set a style. Yeah. A style is basically your font, your your your, your style, your size, your color, etc. Perfect. You can have a, a symbol if you want to choose from different symbols. Mm -hmm. Or or not. Okay. So that just tells you what the okay. label is going to look like. So I noticed on this one you were going to AutoCAD. What other systems does the text labeler uh, support? It supports most of your CAD, okay. AutoCAD, D, uh, DGN, FME generic. Um, just means you know it's a, it's yeah. a good it's a good baseline for, for if you're going to many many formats. Yeah. yeah. Esri, ArcGIS. 
map info G media. And okay. what what these target formats do is they just put the required information and create those format attributes that yep. we saw on the input. Yeah. Uh, they're the correct ones to get the font correctly, the size correctly. Just so you don't have to do a mapping of a bunch of attributes, it just kind of does it on the fly. Perfect. And we've we've got the most common ones here. Yeah. Okay, now the rule on on the, the the for the labels is this this controls the placement of the label. Wow. So we have a style that controls what it looks like. Yeah. The rule can can control where it goes. Yep. So we can set have it. Uh, Very powerful. Yeah, we can map the the center, the end, the the, the street. We can set offsets. In this case, we want a center line because we're mm -hmm. going to be giving it poly polygons. We want it to run it up the up the street polygon instead. Yep. Yeah. Uh, we can label join features, or we can label each feature. So you don't actually yeah. have to join all your features together yeah. before you label them. It will do that on the fly. Yeah. Uh, other things you can set the label repeat. You can say, oh, I got to squeeze this in. You can make the text a little bit smaller. Yeah. That's fine. Uh, you can let cross some lines. You can allow it to have it leader lines. Wow. Uh, yeah. If we want to get the whole leader <laughs> text again, and we want to get that back again. We can, we can do create it. leader lines. Awesome. Um, so all of these rules and, and each of these rules will will be different yep. for for uh, different uh, types. Yep. So that was a, a line. Let's see if we have a polygon. Yeah. What sort of rule? So the polygon right. rules yeah. are a bit different. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Yeah. Beautiful. So that's that's the the map text labeler. And yep. again, each of the text outputs comes out of different ports. So you can yep. decide what to do with it. Yeah. Now one of the things that goes along with the map text labeler is we have this map text styler. Yeah, and that's a helper transformer. And in a lot of cases in FME, you'll have sort of core transformers and then helper transformers that help, just kind of help things out a little bit. Yeah. Right? Um, in this case, w for things that are going to be um, obstacles, we just uh, uh, put some settings on those obstacles that say, hey, this is a polygon. You know, our polygon line width is going to be 15. Okay. We're telling it ahead of time. You know, this is what our polygon is going to look like. Yeah. You might want to move the labels up a bit, a bit just to just yeah. to make make way for it. Yeah. And we can do points and lines and all sorts of things. I so it's see. just a way of sort of giving the map text label a little bit more information about what it needs to know about some of its features coming yeah. in. Yeah. Okay. Now the the next uh, key transformer here, and this is a. a um, Format specific transformer is yep. a DWG styler, okay. and we have a DWG styler and we have a DGN styler. Okay, so CAD, DWG for AutoCAD, DGN for MicroStation. That's right. Yeah, and this allows you. It's just kind of one-stop shop to set up all your CAD symbology. Yeah, and it's got some nice. It's got some nice tools. And they, here we're just setting some area symbology. We can set fills, the type of hatch fills it's going to get. Uh, we're setting the fill is going to come from FME color, so yeah. whatever color we set before is going to come in there. Yeah. Our text is going to have this font name. Yeah. It's going to be a, a multi-text instead of yeah. a, a standard text, etc. Yeah. But we can do more with this as well. And the neat thing is, if we pick a template file, thanks, City of Ruby. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we we can go in and we can say. Oh, we're going to have some blocks in there, too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But we don't know what our blocks are. Well, let's look at the template file. Yeah. Oh, hey, here's a list of our blocks. Yeah. So you can have a whole list of, of, of blocks here, and you can just pick off. And this way you know that the blocks are defined in the template yes. file. Yes. You're not, you don't get that error later that, hey, this isn't defined, or I yeah, can't find yeah. this. And then when you don't have to write down a list of what all your blocks are. You can just pick them from the list. You can also do that with line styles as well. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So it has all the line styles defined within that template yeah. file, which are good. Now, the key caveat here about this template file is that you have a template file setting here, and you have a template file setting here. Mm -hmm. In this case, it's not set. Yeah. If you do set, use a template file here, be sure to set it here. Okay. Now, because and this confuses some people sometimes because this is this template file is used by the writer when it writes. Yes. This template file is just used, used so it can get that information to help you out. And that's right. So we, so we, that's right. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So it's, it's a very key thing to have them both. That's right. Okay. And so let's have a look at, at uh, what the result's going to be. Since I think we're getting a little low on time there. Yeah, we're at nine o'clock now. So okay. So we're in good shape. Uh oh, okay, that was the, that was bad. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Is your machine melting? No, what I just let's do that a different way. That's okay, better. There we go. Okay, continue. Okay. Do do do. do. Oh, you probably have a slide that shows what it looks like. Oh, here it comes. Here it comes. There we hey, go. Hey, so there we have it. 
So here we have our, you know, beautifully rendered. Yeah, you can see the transit lines. Exactly. You can see, yeah, the text yeah, all, all, all works the way it's supposed to. Perfect. Look at that. That's beautiful. Yeah. So we're looking good. Yeah. So let's get to. Yeah. yeah. We went through that. We went through that. that. Went, went through that. that. Okay. There we were to go. Yeah. So uh, so yeah. So you can see if we've been doing CAD GIS for for 20 plus years. So uh, so it really is a bread and butter. As Dave mentioned, um, CAD standards within an organization are huge. Yeah. Definitely. Um, we have had some organizations where every CAD file is um, or every designer followed their own kind of flavor. And that um, is an order of magnitude uh, worse. Yeah, yeah, that way lies yeah. madness. Yeah, yeah. And I guess there's one theme of, of this is, you know, go step by step. Dave, Dave just sort of, we tried to illustrate as we went along sort of the thought process of how we took a big problem like that real CAD yep. and then we broke it down and just, ch and just chip away at it. Whereas if you look at the whole thing, uh, you know, at, at the start, it, would, it could be overwhelming, but you chip, you chip away, and, you, and it's surprising how quickly it goes. Yeah. yeah definitely. And last but not least, if you go to safe.com, you'll see that we're always on. We're online, and um, ask us anything. So at any time you're working with FME, um, just type a question there. We're online to help. And um, if we're not online, then there will be um, leave a message. So really easier than ever to get in touch with us because you don't have to click contact us and then try to find the email or whatever. You just, uh, you just type in there and we'll be sure to get back to you. Um, and if we're online, we'll get back to you. It's like live. So yeah. Yeah. yeah and support it. Or safe.com slash support yeah uh, that's that's guys like me we're always happy to yeah. help and yeah. uh, we don't mind uh, you know giving us a gnarly problem when we'll try to get you started no, on no it. no yeah because we have a whole team of, of uh, folks just like Dave and their whole mission is just to help yeah so uh, yeah it's the FME happiness team I guess you could say. yeah and and, and they love it it's, yeah we, we actually love the tough problems yeah so there you go so um, when you get the slide deck, um, there's many resources here, and each of those are a link. So there's an ebook. So if you get the slide deck, you open it, you click on ebook. For example, you go to ebook, free training um, on server, free training on desktop. We have a blog where we talk about customer stories and things coming from FME and just general industry is stuff. Yep. And um, our knowledge base, which is a whole community of users um, that are that you can interact with other users, post questions, they'll help. So, so um, that's um, beginning the whole revamp as well. So we're pretty excited about that. Yeah, and all of the the, the workspaces, not uh, not some of the source data. I can't share some of that, yeah. but all of the workspaces from this uh, webinar will be online. Uh, on, I believe on the webinar link, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if you have downloaded, and I saw go by, some people have already downloaded that CAD QA demo, um, and the workspaces were not in there. They will be as part of the um, the webinar resources. So when you download the work, all the webinar resources, those workspace, all the workspaces Dave um, had will be uh, or created yeah. will be in there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Unfortunately, not all of the source data, but that's right. The, the workspaces will be. Yeah, yeah. Perfect. So. Uh, yeah, so um, so thanks so much. Um, keep asking questions. The webinar will um, continue to run. Dave and I will not end the webinar, so um, we will. Um, it's we're a little over time. We will sign off. But uh, um, Annabelle and Mark are online and continuing to answer uh, answer questions. So yep. yeah. So thanks, Annabelle. Thanks, Mark. Thanks, Dave. And uh, thanks everyone who tuned in today. It's uh, definitely yeah. It was a lot of fun, and I hope we uh, you found this useful. And um, if we, you know we could, can address everything, so be sure to reach out to us, and yeah. we'll get back to you. Yeah, and there are other CAD uh, webinars uh, online, and that's why we try to cover something different every time we do one because uh, all of our old ones are online as well. So we try not to repeat ourselves too much. Yeah. Um, so you might want to look through some some of those for for different ideas as well. Great. Great. So thank you, thank you so much.